Welcome back to day three of the League of Legends World Championship live from Los Angeles. And it's now time to discuss after the break SKT versus TSM. SKT T1 coming up with a very big win there. Picks and bans kind of went as everybody expected. We, we figured we'd see a few picks go this way. Kind of interesting that they did get Ari on the side of SKT, but the early dives, a lot of vocal, of vocal uh, points coming out from you, Crepo. What yeah. were your thoughts on that like, early dive from Team match? Solo Mid? When we were watching the match, like I just like started getting really excited and, and at the same time really angry because TSM was playing the better conceptual early game. They were really like playing the game better. Like when it's pure like methodical and pure in your head, they were playing it better. What points make because, you think that? Okay, SKT one failed already against uh, OMG with the three v one dive, so they okay. kind of adapted their mm -hmm. strategy to now let Lee Sin dive free against one as well. But it still was really slow for Lee to get there. And then what Dyrus did was really smart. He said, well, okay, you're going to dive me. I, I know you're going to dive me. I'm going to move away, take my tower. I don't care. That's okay. the correct play from Dyrus. At the bottom lane, Renekton didn't do that. I'm not sure if that was like a, a choice, but I, I think they just defaulted to try and survive under the tower and try and mirror. Mm -hmm. And But then TSM actually had the chance there, right there to dive Renekton, kill him, take his tower while, Ren while Dyrus wasn't there. And they screwed it up. Like uh, special, like with all credit, like special played a really nice match. Has really nice Rick Shadow this, so I'm not, I don't want to bash him at all. But right there, he took tower aggro too early. He took one or two tower shots when there was no damage coming out from his teammates on the Renekton, mm. which should always happen. So the ideal three v one dive is support taking tower aggro, the double buff and the other laner take, hitting as hard as you can. Max damage. Uh, max damage on Renekton. Resetting mm. tower aggro. A uh, Corky will Valkyrie out or release will repel when it switches. Kill him. Take tower. Snowball game. Yeah, and just going off that, like, special, just mechanically, TSM got outplayed, but I feel like their, like Krepo said, their strategy was on point. Um, Impact should have died there in 3 vs 1 dive, just because special didn't even exhaust, played it, you know, you know, they just played it not so good. And also, you can tell how, uh, like, uncharacteristic it is of Korean games for there to be a 3 v 1 dive, because when I watched the dual lane on SKTT1 side, they got the tower, and they allowed Dyrus to, if, freeze. If, yeah. to freeze. They, they should have pushed it all the way to the tier 2 tower and let the cannon minion reset. But when I watch them recall, I'm like, there's a cannon minion there on their side. Dyrus can freeze the cannon minion and just permanently just sit there. And all, he, all Dyrus has to do is not die, which is exactly he what died. he did. He yeah. died at the worst possible time. All you have to do there is just sit there. You'll draw jungle pressure for like minutes of the game, crucial minutes for Lee Sin to make plays. All you have to do is just not die. Um, and I just feel like TSM... Mecha got mechanically outplayed, but SKT T1 strategy, especially in the 3v1 dive kind of early game mm -hmm. that NA is used to, they played it, uh, it's not so good. Yeah, they didn't play it so well, but I do agree with you guys that it could have gone huge in the early game really for big. TSM. Mm -hmm. um, but that pressure, you know, yeah, they didn't freeze the lane, but then they had pressure across all three lanes with impact shoving, and especially in mid and bot, they were slowly chipping away on those turrets but over time as well. At the same time, okay, you get pressure in all three lanes, but how, how about you actually pushing a wave? You let a level one rumble push you back because the dive failed. I can get it if, if both of them are in the same position, sure, you can pressure all you want, but that was a level three Renekton because of a failed dive against a level one rumble. The wave would have reset, okay, level two then. If you then have jungle pressure on him, he dies and it's just... It was just was a really poor play by SKT1 strategy-wise, like strategy -wise, and I really hope they fixed it. As you said, they have a really good coach, so I, I, you could already see the little improvement in, in switching from the no 3v1 at mm -hmm. all to make it into mm -hmm. a 3v1 if they have lane swaps. Hopefully they recognize now that, hey, Dyrus did something really smart, and they can adapt it in the next game. Another thing uh, I want to point out is just the fact, like, why Caitlyn has kind of fallen out in North America. Not Like, she's still a pretty common pick, but she's not, like, overwhelmingly common as in other uh, regions. If you if you do the 2v1 swap, she's not actually that great in a 3 versus 1 situation. She doesn't do that much damage, and she's only really good at pushing minions. She's not really so great at killing champions. And she's just as good as every other idiot killing towers. Mm -hmm. um, when you finally swap back into the 2v2 lane, you allow Corky, who's going to hit level 6, to bully you in lane. And that's what, exactly what you saw. Corky Sona has so much more control over that lane than a Caitlyn, because at any right. time they can just kill you. And... Um, if TSM didn't misplay some of those ganks, it could have gone really, really, really bad. actually had a double kill there yeah. at bottom once. Yeah, and I mean, obviously once SK Telecom did get that lead, it was just like kind of the team we're used to seeing. The team we've seen over in the OGN, all the crisp Korean play, they got the ward control, they got the right picks, they played the game extremely conservatively, and they were able to come out on top. But yeah, the early on portion of the game, 
crazy. Yeah, and that could be, we were talking about this as well, is that could be a big weakness for them moving forward because if they can't shore up mm -hmm. uh, their, their early game play against very good teams that can actually take that snowball and run with it, it's going to cause them to lose. Uh, that said, if we go look at the, the mid game right there, I really like Bengi's pretty early oracles. He got control over the jungle mm -hmm. in an extremely effective way. And to TSM's credit as well, they knew they were facing that pick composition. They knew exactly how SK Telecom was going to play that. And in fact, they survived longer than many Korean teams do mm -hmm. against SK Telecom when they're trying to do that. They knew that their jungle was warded. They felt that pressure on the map and they didn't make bad rotations through their jungle and allow SKTT one to catch them until pretty late on when they decided to go for that dragon fight and Odd One got a little bit out of position at the front of the pack. Yeah, the DFG really caught him off guard there. Yeah. yeah, exactly. TSM played this game conceptually so, so, so well, except so they failed a dive, mm -hmm. then Reg, uh, Dyrus escaped top lane, but died right after. So he, he, he probably was in the mm -hmm. mindset, hey, they didn't kill me now, they can never kill me. And so that gave them a huge lead on the top lane, a lot of pressure there. Then Odd One did a really smart gang going through the jungle, knowing that they had triple pink ward at one point invested in, in the river. Allowed Odd One to go behind bot lane. Pumandu dropped immediately. And then Odd One unfortunately failed his flash over the wall, which didn't make his repel connect. Double F. You, you kind of have thoughts? to give it to T uh, SKTT1, though, because when it does get to that mid game that they're really comfortable with, and they're not in this weird situation of 3v1 and lane swaps and, and whatnot, they actually do really well controlling the enemy. They, they control the enemy jungler with, with pinks. They look for right. those picks. They do everything pretty much like 100% correctly. Um, but I feel like in the next game, if TSM just shapes up a little bit mechanically, they actually have a really good shot at beating SKTT1. Right. Which is kind of surprising. And I'm so interested now, exactly. That's why we're all very surprised watching this game, because yeah. the way the different regions' games and closed systems are really interacting with each other. Because I almost feel like after watching this game, Korea in general was only worried about getting here, but not necessarily exposed to the things the other regions were doing. And even though, once they adapt, maybe we'll see a whole different game, but they have to make that adaptation. Absolutely. first impressions, the early turret diving game, is the game that's beating everyone until they find a defense for it. Oh, so, crap. Oh, final, final thoughts, because I know you guys could talk <laughs> yeah, forever yeah. on this. <laughs> yeah. Okay, two points. Like, just like, we went through this. The only reason I'm so adamant about it is because we went through <laughs> this phase. Like, we were horrible at 3 one dives. So in scrims, we had to reiterate the process so many times. Yeah. <laughs> so you can really pinpoint Second, I just want to point out what Doublelift told me during okay. the game. He's like, Korea has like a lot of gentlemen's agreements, it seems, where they really mm -hmm. want to they want to find out who's the best skill-based player. <laughs> yeah, I want to say, too, we did actually used to see a lot of this early diving. I mean, that's where Najin Sword's do dive mantra comes from. But that was back in Champion win Champions Winter. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, the dives have gone down significantly. And guess what? SK Telecom wasn't a team yep. until Champion Spring. So this isn't something they've ever really had to deal with. So it is a unique flaw that uh, many older teams, and if we look at Nodge and Sword, I'm sure they'll do a lot better against it mm. uh, coming into the later stages of the tournament. But SK Telecom, I agree. They've got to shore up that early game. All right. With the final words from our analysts, and after three days of games, let's see where the Group A teams stand heading into the second half of the group stage. OMG is sitting in first at 4-0, and oh, and SKT now alone in second place at 3-1. and one. Team Solomid falls back into third place with their loss to SKT, while the Lemon Dogs and Gaming Gear round out the bottom half of the standings. All right, and with today's five games in our match history, let's take a look at how close the four of you are catching the OP viewers. With these stats at 16 and 4, the viewers are looking like cloud nine of predictions. So on top of that one, I got a little head shake there from Double Lift. A little, no. Well, in the middle of the pack reminds me a lot of the European summer split. Everybody just tightly packed into the same score. Except Crepo, the, the good European. news is, yeah. <laughs> Nice. We still have 20 more games, Crepo, so that's, that's, you're not out of it yet. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. still... Of course I can. You just keep going with your evil, <laughs> evil what, ways. I, I think I'm just going to match whatever these guys do, and then at least I don't, I'm not as horribly far behind. <laughs> that's why we well, have to hide the picks We have, We have hidden ballots for this, yeah. guys. Yeah. That's Put them in the hat, put them out later. <laughs> and the first of five rematches in this double round-robin format feature the teams of Group B. Up first, it's going to be Ozone looking for revenge against Gambit. And then next, Beck A and Mancloud step back into the rift for round two of Fnatic versus Vulcan. After that, Maneski looks to turn their World Championship tournament around when they battle Gambit. That's followed by Fnatic vs. Ozone, and in the finale, it will be Vulcan against Maneski. Day 4 kicks off on Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific, which is Friday at 4 a.m. Central European Summertime. Absolutely, and that does it from the five of us here at the desk. Now let's send it over to Shox for a proper adieu. 
Merci bien, Rivington. Well, it was another amazing day here at Worlds. And if you missed any of the matches, head over to lolesports.com for all the results, updates, and VODs. And while you're there, go to lolesports.com slash tickets to grab your seats for the Galen Center and help cheer your favorites into the finals. All right, that does it for day three of the Season 3 World Championship. So from all of us here in Los Angeles, our guests at the Analyst Desk, and the entire live broadcast crew, thanks for watching. him down, flashes in as well, they're going to keep up with the kill, they're going to pick up the Nexus kill and go 3-0 here with that victory over Lemon Dogs in Group A. But here comes Bengi from the side, they've not seen him, this could cost them, Deadly Brother surely going to be finished off. See on towards Noob, no look at that damage, Paul comes in from Darius, he sidesteps, oh wow! <laughs> the victory against the Lemon Dogs and that's going to give him a massive boost of confidence here going forward in the groups. Flashes over the wall, triple kill as he turns into Wild Turtle, this is going to be the Quadra, does pick up the Quadra kill. Ladies and gentlemen, SK Telecom T1 is your second team in Group A, they pick up the win against TSM. <laughs>